In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to import GPS data into Datascape and then display it on a map. So here's our visualization space and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a panel which is where I'm going to place my map and the panel appears on the screen. If I select the panel from the visualization tree I can then give it a name so it just makes sense when I look at it later on and what I can then do is set the texture in this case to OpenStreetMap and we see OpenStreetMap appears and then I can use this mini map to actually zoom in to the area that I want to visualize. Now I know the data in this case is uh, based around Birmingham. So I'm just going to zoom the map in onto the centre of Birmingham. And you'll see the main screen uh, map is updating as I go. And I'm then going to set the axis ranges so as to make sure that uh, that's where the data gets plotted. Uh, a couple of other things. I'm going to force the uh, or turn off auto scaling so as to make sure that when I bring the, the data in it doesn't change the axes ranges and I'm actually then just going to switch off uh, the various map axes because we don't really need them. Next to bring my data in I'm going to ask to add a new data set I'm going to choose the file reader then going to browse for my data set we're going to pick up this file here in CSV called cycling data and here I get a preview of what the data is uh, looks like the uh, my ID I probably don't really need so I'll just uh, remove that but I'll bring the rest of the fields in and import the data 596 records um, it's then telling me actually it's got a partial match it's got another geospatial mapping so that's probably also got latitude and longitude so I could use that but in this case now I want to create my own so I'm going to click on new it then gives me an option of a couple of different mapping templates and I'm going to use the geospatial mapping template click on that and what it's actually done is it's actually taken the fields from the data and it's immediately tried to slot them in sensibly um, against the different mapping parameters. So it's actually already set longitude against longitude, latitude against latitude. Um, if I wanted to change any of those, all I'd do is I'd just pick one of these up and I'd just drag it onto uh, the relevant field. Um, initially, I don't want to use the Y axis, so I'm just going to set that to zero. I'm happy to, sh to show things as red spheres to start with. So in case, that case I can just click on plot and now if I zoom across to my map I can actually see there is uh, all my data. So if I want to actually make use of the vertical dimension now um, then we've got uh, altitude actually here so we can actually show a proper geospatial plot. So I'm just going to drag that in and click on plot. Now the problem here is that actually my axes scale vertically. The data is probably way up in the sky there somewhere. So what I need to do is just adjust uh, the vertical dimension. So if I go on to axes, yep, sure enough, I can see my vertical scale here is 0 to 100. Uh, sorry, 0 to 10. So I'm going to change that to maybe 0 to 1,000. And apply changes. And now I can actually see my data back on the map. And so this is showing me actually height above ground. Uh, so uh, as Ian here was cycling along, you can actually see where the hills are, where the dips are, as he was cycling along on his journey. What I want to do now is do what's called time on a stick. So I want to actually show the time uh, that Ian was at each location as a vertical height instead of altitude. Uh, I'm going to click on the pencil here, so this gives me a bigger editing window. Remove what's there at the moment, and then if I look here, I've actually got a code snippet. We're going to find some way of actually building this into the, the uh, mapping templates. So you don't need to do this manually. Uh, so I just need to put the uh, the date time field in, so that in this case is GPS time, and I also need to set the start time, so the earliest time I've got, in this case is 2012, 05, 28, and 15, 53, 46. Of course, I could cut and paste that if I'd remembered. Um, click on OK. And just to actually check here, if I look at the preview, the, yeah, this now gives me a set of values between naught and, and uh, just over, just under 3,000. So that's seconds, basically lap seconds of the journey. So I can now plot this. Again, we need to find the data's uh, stretching away again, so I just need to change that vertical dimension. So go on to axes, so let's just set this to 3,000. A bit more than that. Let's go to 5,000. Bit more again. Oops. Okay, 10,000. 
Okay, so now I can actually see this is Ian's journey, so I can actually see which direction he's going now. So we started actually down here at the offices and roughly followed, uh, I think, the canal route out and then headed out uh, across the park, uh, heading in the direction of Litchfield. One problem though here is I can't easily follow Ian's uh, track along the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ch slightly change the display. So pick up the mapping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this uh, little algorithm here and I'm actually going to change back to zero to anchor. But I'm going to now use a, what's called a bar chart cylinder. So I've got to, or in fact I'll use bar chart cube here. And I'm going to change just the size in the y axis. So basically I'm going to stretch this uh, sort of cube to the right length and I'm just going to adjust it by 100 so it's going to be a reasonable set of values. So yeah, that's going to give me values up to uh, 28 and turn it to plot. So we can see this gives us a far easier uh, to read set of data. And it also highlights some interesting things. Like here we can see there's actually a loss of uh, signal uh, as you went through the forest inside the park. Um, just to finish off, I might want to put some labels against each of these items. So all I need to do is go down to here and um, if you want to say height and what his altitude was at and what time was and plot that again and now as I hover each over each of these I can actually see his height at each of the timestamps. So hopefully that's given you an idea about how we can bring GPS data into Datascape and visualize it in a couple of ways and we'll do some more advanced visualizations on GPS data in later tutorials. Thank you.